okay, it's just not about a building or an object or an image or music. You got to get to something deeper and the aesthetic ends up coming at the end. Business of Architecture, episode 247. Hello, Architect Nation. I'm Enoch Sears, and I'm your guide on this journey to discover the tips, strategies, and secrets for running an impactful and hyper-profitable architecture practice. If you haven't already, get free instant access to the four-part architecture firm profit map video by going to freearchitectgift.com. Enter your best email address on that page and you'll get instant access. Today's podcast is sponsored by BQE Core, the all-in-one firm management software. Core helps you manage your projects and your finances to create a profitable and impactful firm. Get a free trial at businessofarchitecture.com forward slash demo. Today, we have a world-class videographer, Jeff Durkin, with us to talk about the power of video as a tool for persuasion and storytelling. Jeff studied architecture at the University of California, Berkeley, worked for 10 years in the architecture industry, and then transitioned to videography in 2008. He quickly found a niche using his understanding of space and the built environment that he gained while studying and working in the architecture industry to create architecturally rich videos highlighting cutting edge architecture and redevelopment projects. They are truly a beauty to behold his videos. You can go check them out at breadtruckfilms.com. Jeff has created many of the architecture industry's most recognized mini documentaries and films, including many projects for San Diego architect developer Jonathan Siegel, and most recently, the firm Brooks & Scarpa. If you're currently in the architecture industry, but maybe considering a different path, this interview should open up your mind to understand that there are a lot of different courses you can go down to use your design thinking and your problem solving background. Literally, the sky is the limit on what you can do. Actually, not even the sky, because you may actually work in the future on a Mars colony or a space station, who knows? In any case, video marketing is the wave of the future, and I'm excited to have Jeff Durkin here back on the show to talk with us about everything from his journey, how he chooses his clients, to how much a typical video engagement costs, and the kind of impact that he's seeing from these video projects. Jeff, welcome to the Business of Architecture. Yes, great. Thanks for having me back. So, Jeff, what would you say are the big kind of changes that you're seeing in video and architecture right now? What are the big trends? Well, video communication is really progressing. It's, I, I say this is just the beginning of the dawn of video communication. For the next 20 years, everyone's going to use video to communicate, to get their ideas out, to tell stories, to create emotion. And then architects use it, you know, the, in, in all different ways now. What I'm seeing now is architects are using it to, to communicate their ideas for a project that is being proposed that's not out there yet they want to get funding they want to get the neighborhood community to approve it they want to link up with a developer so they're using video as the next step to get their ideas out there before the projects are built is is one part of it and then the second part of it once things are built people want portfolio videos so it's not just about having photos and a one paragraph write up on your website but it's great to have a one minute video to go along with that so that you can share it and it's, uh, you know, it's on social media and you send it to a client. So I'm seeing more growth and some architects embrace it. Architects are always futurists and they're always into new technology and, and what's evolving out there. So um, they've been pretty good at bringing, you know, video and animation into their worlds. You know, VR is another thing that's I think is a great fit for architecture that's starting to emerge. Augmented reality, that stuff's going to be really good. So there's some cool things on the horizon, and, and there's some really interesting uses right now that architects are, are, are employing video for. I'm, I'm so excited to have you back on, really, Jeff. You sent me the link to the video that you had produced recently about a project in Durham. And, you know, I've been seeing more and more video uh, in terms of architecture firms, developers, but specifically architects starting to use it. And not a whole lot, but a few here and there, and it seems like such a powerful medium that is so well suited to the visual aspect of architecture. What I tell, you're right, what I tell my clients is Thomas Edison invented the camera to film a piece of architecture. And there's nothing more powerful than a camera moving in slow motion through a space as you see the light coming through the windows or showing people interacting in a time lapse, uh, going through a lobby, a museum, an art gallery, seeing the sun set over a swimming pool of a beautiful home. 
it's just architecture needs to be filmed because you need the motion, you need the light, and the, you can't ca capture that that great in photography, and you can't capture the impact that it has on the people in photography either because there's no storytelling in a still image. So here we interview the people that live there, the people in the neighborhood, the people that are going to have uh, their life transformed by taking an empty parking lot and turning it into a park and a mixed-use place with a school and place for community. So there's just so many layers that you can add into video that um, express the complexity of architecture that you that you can't get across any other way. And in your work, Jeff, have you had any experiences where they're just sort of the stars aligned because of the work you were doing with something that needed to happen? Maybe someone's trying to get something approved. Can you tell me any stories about how maybe that emotional story was told and actually had an impact on something? Yeah, the story you mentioned in Durham is a great example. What, uh, and, you know, for, for your audience listeners, by the way, I came on the show and I, I talked about my work as a filmmaker and documentary filmmaker for architects. And, and I teamed up with a great developer architect firm in Durham, North Carolina that wanted to transform an old tobacco factory into a modern arts and tech campus. And so their angle was, is it, it was in a predominantly African American neighborhood full of artists. And they didn't want to, they didn't want to come in and say, we're going to bulldoze this site. We're going to build a mini mall. We're going to build upscale condos. So the emotional component was to, sh to, to interview people who live there and show how the architects were working with the community and the, uh, and the artists that were living there and working there currently and show them how they plan to integrate that into their new project. So the emotional component was, you know, hey, guys, we're going to take the fear out of this new development. It's not going to be a Walmart that's going to come in here. We're going to talk to you. We're going to show you what we do. It's going to be in a nice three-minute format so you can watch it and share it and show your friends. You need to understand. And it was, it was, it was more of a connection about building community. So that was, that was kind of the storytelling and emotional goal of that video. You know, I was really, I mean, you told the story so well, and I hope our listeners go look at that for some inspiration, but there was a particular part that kind of jumped out at me. Of course, the interviews are powerful, but then you had a couple drone shots there where you showed some animation of some view corridors or some circulation paths or some connections to adjoining neighborhoods, kind of showed how close it was to downtown area, showed how close it was to another neighborhood just to the other side. And that was such a powerful image because so many times as architects, I know we present on these big boards, it's two-dimensional, it's flat. We're kind of drawing lines and diagrams and arrows. But once I saw this drone image with the arrows going, it was just so powerful. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's, uh, that's actually some of the icing on the cake for these. We have great drones and we do diagrams. We basically get a drone shot and draw on top of it. Arrows connecting things, circulation paths, view corridors. Uh, it's a new way to, instead of using Google Maps or something print it out you have the real neighborhood in in you know true photography and you can see the cars moving and then you can add animation you, we get the 3d model from the architect so then the building starts building on top of the empty site then trees pop up and then people start coming in so within like five seconds maybe 10 seconds you can take an empty dirt lot and show the viewer how it's going to transform into this lush community active area and I think emotionally, that's really powerful because usually these sites are empty parking lots, dirt lots, old buildings. They're, they're pretty, you know, they're pretty uh, unloved. <laughs> and uh, so it's a combination of Hollywood visual effects, which is compositing animation on top of live video. It's a combination of architecture because you got to show the landscape and the people and the trees and show how the community is coming up and you need the 3D model. And then it's kind of a combination of, um, it's almost a, a combination of like, you know, narrative persuasion, I think they call it, where you show like, a, tell a story about how something's going to improve and grow. And then people watching it can kind of understand it without getting so combative as, as if you just would present it to them, you know, in, in, a, in a presentation format, in a PowerPoint format or something. Jeff, we had you on the show. I looked on the calendar. It was January 20th of 2017. Oh, sweet. And right now we're in April of 2018. So a little bit over, probably about 18 months ago or so. Yeah. 
Yeah, great. Well, listening. I love it. Someone actually just reached out last week uh, on email who had heard me on the show. I just wanted to know he's transitioned out of architecture into music and he wanted to talk to me about my experience. So he's in Spain right now on a, on a Fulbright scholarship studying music. And wow. Yeah, it's, so. it's fascinating, Jeff, how these new medium, like the podcast that we're participating in now, the visual uh, videography that you do, they're really starting to take off. They are. It's just the beginning. Like the next generation of architects are going to grow up. Video is going to be a, a, a tool, a main tool, just like the pencil was a tool. And that gave way to CAD and that gave way to 3D modeling and video is going to be there as a, as a new way to communicate. And the fact that it's three minutes, it's short. It can keep your attention on like a, you know, hour long presentation. And it's shareable because you can share it on social media. You can share it on, you know, uh, your website, a phone. You can text someone it. So the fact that it has that ability, it's, it's not like a board, you know, a board, a client sees it and then that's the end of it after that one hour presentation. These things live and they'll live forever too. So if you're building a legacy for your firm and the work you're doing in a city, you'll have this, these documentary stories for years. And Jonathan Siegel is one of my biggest clients. I'm working on a new film with him. I filmed him for 10 years, showing him transform each building, each neighborhood. So there's this lifelong uh, benefit of having this type of videos and these stories. You're right. It's, it's an asset, almost like a book. And I just saw the recent, recently Jonathan shared the, the Polk video. I think it was that I saw. That's a teaser. That's that a, was a good one, man. Yeah. Love it. The real one's coming up. It's going to be out. Like All a, right. I'm excited. Too, so yeah, yeah. You'll like it. It's beautifully filmed. It's so gorgeous. And I interviewed people that live there and people that work in the area. So that's another thing I like to do, show how architecture can impact people. It's not about so much about the shape and the concrete and the glass. People really, you know, architects really get into the form of that and the, and the, I say the creative aspects of their building, but the videos can bring in the community aspects because you can talk to people and there's nothing more powerful than having someone who lives in that space talk about wanting to stay there and have a family. That's, that's the Polk video, young couple. They got married and lived in this apartment. Now they want to have a family in this apartment. So that level of storytelling and connection is, is, is really deep and video is the perfect format to, uh, to get that across. Jeff, how would you say that your architectural background, training as an architect as, as in, in architecture, has influenced you compared to some other videographers that are out there? Uh, that's the secret sauce. That is the secret sauce is the fact that I have a uh, background in architecture and I have a background in you know design and I spent 10 years as a designer in different firms in Northern and Southern California. And uh, you need that, honestly. If you go to film school, you go to USC, UCLA, whatever film school you're at, you're not learning about creating sense of place. You're not learning about how to build community. These aren't cinematic or film um, concepts that you study and learn. So when it comes to creating a video about the people, you don't have that knowledge and there's no way you can get that. You can film a building. Anyone can film a building sitting there and make it look nice these days. You can do it on an iPhone, film it at the right time of day and that's going to look pretty good. But the, the problem is the people watching those videos aren't going to really connect with much. You know, after 30 seconds, 45 seconds, yeah, it's a pretty building in downtown LA. Okay, I got all that. Um, I'm ready to move on. But uh, I'm able to blend the, docu the human characters of a documentary with the beautiful photography of architectural photography and then kind of wrap it up in this uh, with graphics and text from a real design, uh, real design viewpoint. It remind my audience how you went from a, your architecture design background into, I remember the story, but just quickly remind us how you got into filmmaking from the architecture background. Well, I had always been making films as a hobby. I actually had a film minor at UC Berkeley. I got my degree in architecture. I had a, under, uh, a minor in visual studies, which was a combination of film, photography, and writing. So I always had it kind of as a, um, like a side passion and interest. I made short films, and then I'd work in the architecture firm Monday through Friday, and on the weekends make short films. It was, it was kind of a hobby of mine, and architects always like camera and software and technology and all that stuff. So that was all really natural to me. And I was doing a lot of architectural photography for the firms I was working for and as a freelancer. So I had kind of the, the raw components there in place at, at a small level. And in 2008, 
architects will know very well that a recession came on. And my firm went from 50 people to 10 people. And projects stopped being funded and no one wanted to build stuff. So I got laid off and my boss was uh, told me, he said, hey, Jeff, everyone's got a website. Everyone wants these new videos. You're doing these videos. I don't know anyone else. You got to pursue that. Go that way. And he was like my first client. So him and Jonathan Siegel and Greg Strayman and people, some people from the San Diego design and developer world were my first clients. And so Jeff, we need videos and then come in and do a little design work and then do some photo work for us and do our website. So I kind of jumped right into this like marketing world that I uh, didn't know a ton about marketing, but I knew a lot about how to get architecture across to a person. And I, I, had the support of the architecture community in San Diego and that helped me grow. That helped me, that helped me kind of, uh, that helped me kind of flourish over the years as I had to, I had to learn filmmaking. I had to learn audio. I had to learn how to do an interview. I had to learn how to edit. You know, there's, 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 there's quite a bit of technical work that goes into making films and videos look natural and clean and not making sure the audio and everything seems nice and normal. So, I kind of spent the, the first three or four years learning how to get the story done from a technical standpoint. Then I had the chance to work with other directors in the advertising world and the branded content world. And I saw how they wrote a story out and how they would interview somebody to get the emotional, the deeper layers out during an interview. So then I went to like a storytelling learning phase where I was learning like, hey, it's just not about a building or an object or an image or music. You got to get to something deeper and the aesthetic ends up coming at the end. So I went through that phase. Then I kind of punched through that. I'm in my 10 year mark right now. This year's going to be 10 years for bread truck films. And now I'm at like a pretty stable level where I feel like I can tell a good story. I know how to shoot it. I have the cameras. I know how to work with people. That's become a big thing. I've become a leader. Leadership was kind of my last phase I learned, you know, when you're sitting down with an architect, how to make them feel comfortable, how to get their thoughts out of their head. And you're usually not going to come out in the first, you know, 15 minutes of an interview, you got to dig deep, as you know, to get into, uh, you know, the more meat of, of their philosophical concepts behind the projects. Um, so that's where I'm at now, 10 years, 10 years of that. Tell me about, uh, quickly tell me about your, the business side of your business. Uh, how does it operate? Do you have employees? Do you have freelancers that you use for jobs? Kind of how does the business side of your business operate? Uh, I have freelancers I use for jobs and I am a freelancer myself. I work here in Southern California and I will, I will do probably, I say 15 to 25 videos a year, depending on uh, a, a variety of things. So I'll get a job. Someone will typically email me. Hey, Jeff, I saw this video. I heard this. I saw this on Facebook. I have a project. And I wanted to get a proposal from you. So I'll put together a proposal. I'll talk to them and say, okay, we need drones. We need time lapse. We may need three days. Like in Durham, we spent three days filming that. Uh, maybe it's just a day because it's in Southern California. So I will put together a proposal based on the time that we need to film, the amount of crew we need, the amount of preparation work we have, and the amount of editing that needs to happen. And a lot of times we're doing package videos these days. So you're going to get a one main video, then you're going to get an Instagram video, and then maybe get a longer video for a museum show or lecture at a lecture you're doing. Sometimes we'll film three or four projects within one shoot and then break out three or four videos at the end of it all. Um, so I kind of price it based on that. And then I do all the editing myself. So I work directly with the clients handle the feedback all myself personally. Uh, if we need to reshape the story now that you've seen it, you heard it, um, we need to reshape the story. And um, that's kind of the creative side. And then uh, we usually get the videos done in about a month. And then they're off to marketing and they're off to putting them to where they need to be seen. And do you find, for instance, in Durham, do you end up flying your own team out that you're familiar working with or you just try to source a team locally? How does that work? It's been a combination over the years, but I've teamed up with a really good partner here in San Diego that does all the drone stuff. He has the insurance. He has the, he has the FAA certification. He's set up and he does the animation and the graphics. So between the two of us, over the last five years, we've formed a pretty powerful one-two punch. He's uh, excellent at getting um, all those beautiful visuals and cinematography, and I've become really good working with the people. 
getting the interviews, scheduling them, getting them in a cool place, you know. You don't want to interview someone in some mundane looking, you know, office area. Sometimes it takes a bit of effort to get someone, you know, to drive a half hour out to an old brick building because it's going to look a lot better. So I've done that and I have gotten local people. Um, sometimes when you have audio guys, you get a local person. But right now, simplicity and two people have really been working. That's awesome. And so you say that you get a lot of your work from referrals. Um, in terms of the videos that you're doing now, what do you think is next, the next evolution of where you're headed? Well, I think, you know, VR is something I would like to, to, to stick my hands into. I have a former uh, intern that has a GoPro rig that's doing some VR videos, and we talked about doing them in the architecture space. I haven't had the right project to get it all together. It's not cheap. Uh, you know, you have to film with uh, 10 cameras mounted uh, to this, like, long tripod thing, go from room to room, get the footage stitched together and post. So um, that's something I'd like to try. I'd like to do a VR project with someone. So if anyone's listening and they're interested in trying that, you know, you can you can get the headset or you can just watch it on uh, – you can watch on YouTube or Vimeo. They have VR uh, players in there where you can scroll the mouse around and get a 360 view of the building. So I would like to try that and I would like to continue to kind of continue to kind of hone my craft of like telling good stories about people that shape the architecture and vice versa. So I think that's something that my clients are starting to realize now is, is yeah, let's get the community on camera. Whereas before it's 10 years ago, just be like, let's just interview the architect. You know, no one would ever think about interviewing other people. So I, I want to evolve a little bit there in uh, blending a documentary film with an architecture film and the VR. I think that's going to be two things I'd like to grow, grow with. You mentioned your latest evolution in terms of yourself and your business was the leadership aspect of things. Tell me, how did you realize that that was something that was lacking? And then tell me about that growth process of starting to become that person. Yeah, that's something um, creative people don't know anything about. Ship. <laughs> that's something I've learned over the course of my life. Artists in those days don't know anything about it. Um, my wife is the simple answer. She works in team building and leadership um, in San Diego for corporate biotech companies. She helps the CEO work with the team. She helps people get better results. She understands motivation. She understands communication. So throughout the years, uh, learning from her content, just listening to her, talking to her, listening to different podcasts uh, about people that have been successful in business, it has just um, it opened my eyes as to as to like hey I could be getting more getting better results out of the projects I'm working with and there's a real human component here that I never considered I never really considered the people all that much would be like let's get their interview done and let's go from the building and um, but, you know now I'm a lot more conscious just, just to okay let's get the interview done on a Friday afternoon usually an architect's mind is clear by then the week's over. No one wants to think about a project Monday morning. No one wants to be interviewed Monday morning. It's just, you know, so learning the people and then communicating to my team. Sometimes these projects have quite a big team. There's a developer, there's a PR agency, there's maybe an advertising agency. You may have to go through several layers of people if it's a big, you know, big budget development in Southern California city. So working with those teams as I grew and as I evolved, I had to learn how to communicate and work with them, um, you know, address what they need in a real simple, easy way. And I think that's kind of been my leadership style is simplicity. I keep the emails really simple. If they're looking for something, sure, I'll give it to you. No problem. Uh, you know, if you want to see a rough cut of something, no problem. You want to get the audio so that you can listen to what they said. So you want to you know, think about the sound bites yourself. No problem. So. I've kind of evolved to be a really simple, easygoing guy with a lot of good, positive energy. And that's kind of been my leadership style. People really respond to that. And it makes it easy, easy to work with. And everyone's really pumped with the video when it's done. I'll bet. <laughs> what, when we, let's talk about budgets in terms of investment. What, you know, for different sizes, what kind of ranges are we talking about here to get some of these different levels of videos done? Sure. There's, um, there's usually three levels of video. One is like, we'll film just a project. So you got a house done, 
you got a library, you got a beautiful building on a college campus. You want, you know, maybe one to three people talking and we'll spend just a day filming that. That's from the six to nine grand range, depending on what it is. Six grand is for a small house. You may be able to get that done just in one day. Nine grand is like if you have a big campus, a Google camp, you know, or a large tech campus, you know, it can go even more up to 12, depending on how complex you want to make it. If we want to interview a bunch of different people, but I would say six to six to six to 10 is roughly the range for filming a building when it's done. The second piece is a firm profile video. Now for firm profile videos, I like to go out and film two or three projects. I don't want to use photos because they're just not that compelling to look at. It's kind of like a PowerPoint presentation. So I got to get out and film, you know, three to four projects. And I spend a day or two at the office filming the process, showing the drawings, the models, interviewing the architects, interviewing the staff. And then at the end of it all, I make a one minute video for each project I filmed. And then I make an overall three minute video on your firm, your profile, your practice, your philosophy. And those kind of uh, vary greatly depending on if I'm flying all over the United States to uh, film different projects, if they're all in L.A. Uh, but I would say a range on that would be from like 10 to 20 uh, K, depending on, on, on what we need. We do photos, too. So we do these great documentary photos of people sketching and drawing that architects never get. They never get good, high quality photos of the process happening with the models in a meeting. Um, so yeah, so for the 10 to 20 grand, we gave you great documentary photos, usually three to four videos, uh, three short videos on each project, and then one overall video. Uh, and then there's usually a little travel budget uh, on top of that if we need to fly somewhere or go somewhere or do something. Can you give me an example of a, a firm profile video that we can check out, one that you're yeah. excited about? Yeah, you know, you know Brooks and Scarpa? Yep. You're in LA, right? Or I'm just I'm north of LA, but I definitely know Brooks and Scarpa. Yep. Yeah, just finished one with them last year, so uh, it's on BreadTruckFilms.com. It's our first pro firm profile video up there because we just finished it, and we spent I think we probably spent three or four months on it. We went to Seattle, we went to North Carolina to film uh, a library, and then we filmed three projects in LA, Venice and downtown. So the concept for them is they do all types of work. You know, they do like schools and libraries and mixed use and housing. So, and retail. So in the video, I wanted to show everyone, hey, look at the variety of designs these do. So we filmed uh, at ASOP, which is a high-end kind of skin and beauty uh, brand in downtown LA, a retail store in the fashion district. And we filmed over in Venice Beach at a, a custom home he had done, which was totally green, solar panels, was giving energy back to the grid. Then we filmed in North Carolina. It was a museum. It was an old uh, produce warehouse that had been turned into the Cal uh, or the, the Raleigh Museum of Contemporary Art. Uh, and then we filmed up in Seattle at a transportation um, station where there was uh, buses, parking, the metro line went through there. And, and it was a completely different project. So we end up with four projects, four one minute videos, and an overall five minute video. And that budget, I think, would travel with around 20 grand to do all that, took about three months. And now it's playing, um, uh, as a part of a traveling, uh, uh, traveling show on them that's going from East Coast to West Coast throughout 2018. Tell me more about the traveling show. Uh, it's on Brooks and Scarpa. It's curated by the Center for Architecture. It started in Florida and Sarasota, and it's going to make its way to LA by December. It's boards, it's models, it's the video um, showing Brooks and Scarpa's work, what they've done, their process. So it's it's free. It's it's open to people that are interested in their work and interested in architecture. I think it's going to go through maybe four or five different museums as it makes its way out to LA at the end. Awesome. Do you know if that video is posted online anywhere where we can check it out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go to redtruckfilms.com. It's my very first firm profile video, and I can send you a link too if, if you want to embed it in the notes. But uh, redtruckfilms.com yeah, awesome. has it. And it's like three and a half minutes, I think. And we filmed uh, Larry and Angie. It's a husband and wife team. 
and we got their ideas about process and got their ideas about how, how they approach their work. And it was, um, it was an awesome project because Larry was a, a former, former professor of mine at UC Berkeley. So 20 years ago, this guy's teaching me as a young student. And here I am back in his office now doing a mini documentary on him. So it was like a really cool experience to come full circle. That's, that's a lot of fun. Jeff, how would, how could people get, reach out to you? Breadtruckfilms.com is the best way. Uh, my contacts on there. Um, send me an email. Tell me about your project. Tell me about your budget. We'll talk and see what we can do. Awesome. Thanks for joining us again, Jeff. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. And that is a wrap. To discover more about the process for creating a better firm with less fires and more fun, go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash freedom webinar. On that page, you'll be able to register for a free 90-minute online training on how to create a firm that empowers your staff and is set to scale without chaining you to your desk. To discover how to market your firm to win better projects, sign up for my next free design firm marketing training at architectwebinar.com. Today's podcast is sponsored by BQE Core, the all-in-one firm management software. Core helps you manage your projects and your finances to create a profitable and impactful firm. Get a free trial at businessofarchitecture.com forward slash demo. The views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the hosts, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.